In this episode, we're going to look at how to use a TFTP server to upgrade a Cisco IOS image. I'll show you how to do it, and we'll talk about the concepts along the way. A TFTP server can help manage the storage of iOS images and revisions to the iOS images. For any network, it's good practice to keep a backup copy of your Cisco iOS software image in case the system image in the router becomes corrupted or accidentally erased. A TFTP server can also be used to store new upgrades to the iOS and then deployed throughout the network where it's needed. We will upgrade the iOS images on Cisco devices by using a TFTP server. We will also back up an iOS image with the use of a TFTP server. Greetings to all my tech heads out there in the Kev Techify Nation. And if you're new here, welcome. This episode is part of my series on configuration examples for the CCNA. I'm Kevin here at Kev Techify. Let's get this adventure started. Packet Tracer Lab 10.7.6. Use TFTP server to upgrade a Cisco IOS image. Had the Packet Tracer file open. On the left side, I have our topology, our work area. This is where we'll work with our devices. On the right side, I have our instruction. On the very bottom right, I have the Packet Tracer activity window that automatically opens when you open up the Packet Tracer file. Down there, it has the instructions in it. In the upper right, the majority of the right side, I have the Word document with those same instructions in there. The reason I have the same instructions up there is we have some questions to answer. Having the Word document allows me to put the questions in there and answer them and save them. Here's our topology. We have a TFTP server, two routers, and a switch that connects them all up. Here's our addressing table. And our objectives, upgrade an iOS on a Cisco device, and then back up an iOS image onto a TFTP server. Down to our instructions. First one, part one, upgrade an iOS image on a Cisco device. Upgrade an iOS image on a router. Access the TFTP server, enable the TFTP service. Okay, here I'm gonna click on our TFTP server. I'm gonna slide this up. On the services tab here, there is the TFTP. Go ahead and click on the TFTP. And it says our TFTP is off. We need to enable it. Note the images that are available. Here's all the files that are available on our device. Which iOS images stored on the server are compatible with the 1941 routers? The ones that are compatible with the 1941 routers, they start with the nine or C1900. So we have two of them that are compatible. And here it's the two that start with C1900. Onto step 1C. From R2, issue the show flash command and record the available flash memory. I'm going to go ahead and minimize our TFTP server. On R2, we'll log in. I make this window a little bit bigger, going right to left. Hit enter. We type in enable. Now we can go ahead and type our show flash. We are looking for the available flash memory. Right here, it gives us information about our flash and what's available is right here. The amount available is, let's see, 221896413 is what's available. Part 1D, copy the Cisco 1941 slash K9 iOS version 15.5 image for the 1941 router from the TFTP server to R2. So from, from the TFTP server, we're going to copy this iOS image. Note, in an actual network, there is more than one interface active on a router. You may need to enter the IP TFTP source interface command to specify which one. What they're saying here 
is you may have other networks coming off of your router and we need to specify which one of these interfaces is actually the TFTP traffic going to go back and forth through. But here we only have one connection into that router. Okay, our command. Once again, it's the copy command. Where are we copying from? Where are we copying to? We're gonna do a copy and we're going from TFTP colon and then we are going to flash and then make sure you put your colon at the end. It's gonna ask you, address or name of the remote host. The IP address of our TFTP server is 192.168.2.254. 192.168.2.254. Go ahead and enter the source name of our file. The source name of our file. We come back over here, look at our TFTP server. This is our source name. And we are looking for the one that is the 155 because we're looking for 15.5. This is the one we're looking for. This is the exact file. So we need to type this name in there. C1900 dash universal K9 dash MZ dot capital S, capital P, capital A. It is case sensitive, so capital S, capital P, capital A dot 155 dash 3 dot capital M for lowercase a dot bin. I recommend making sure you type that in correctly. C1900 universal k9-mz dot spa in caps dot 155 dash three dot capital m for lowercase a dot bin that name looks correct we can go ahead hit enter what do we want to call it when we get to the destination our destination is flash what do we want to call it let's call it the same thing go ahead and hit enter it's accessing our TFTP server, and now we're copying it over. Each one of these little exclamation points tells us it is working because we're in a virtualized lab simulation environment. It copied it over really quick. Depending upon your network, it may take a little bit longer. We did it successfully. We got the OK at the end, and it tells us how many bytes we copied and how long it took. It took us four seconds to copy that. Verify the iOS image has been copied in Flash. Question, how many iOS images are located in Flash? Well, to see what's in Flash, we type in DIR, and it'll default to Flash. And now we have one image, we have a second image, and this is the image we're looking for. The one here that has the 155-3, because we are looking for the 15.5 image. That's what the 155 in the center represents as the 15.5 image. Question was how many iOS images are located in Flash? There are two of them. There are two. Use the boot system command to load the version 15.5 IP base image on the next reload. So we need to instruct it now, use this image to load next time it reboots. Right now it's currently set up to use this one. That's the old one. We wanted to use our new one. To do that, we have to go into global configuration mode, type in config T, and then it is boot space system space, and then it's stored in flash. So we put flash. And then we put the name of the image. So we have to put this name down there. Before I do that, I make sure I put my one space after flash. I come up here to the image that we want. I highlight it from the C all the way to the end of the dot bin. Right click on it, say copy, come back down here and do a paste. Otherwise you could type it all in, but I'm too lazy and I just did a copy paste. Go ahead, hit enter. Now we are going to boot off of our new image. Save the configuration and reload. 
save the configuration, type exit once, brings us out to privilege exec mode. Do a copy space run space start. Copy our running config to the startup. Do we wanna call it startup dash config? Yes, we do. Go ahead and hit enter. And let's go ahead and reload it. Just type in the word reload and hit enter. Are you sure you wanna do it? If you are, just go ahead and hit enter. Hit enter and the process starts. In our simulated environment, it goes pretty quick. We can go ahead and hit enter. We are logged into our device. Use the show version command to verify that the new version has been loaded. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and type in enable, get us into privilege exec mode, then type in show version. Here we can see it's the Cisco iOS version. We have the C1900 Universal KM, and then it's version 15.5. 15.5, that is the new one we just loaded in. On to step two, upgrade an iOS on a switch. Access the TFTP server and copy this file image to S1. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and minimize R2, minimize our server, click on S1. Bring that up, make the window a little bit bigger, going right to left. Enable, we have to be in privilege exec mode, which we are. Now we can say copy, and then we're copying from the TFTP server, colon to flash, colon. It's gonna ask us what is the IP address of our server, once again, that IP address is 192.168.2.254. The file name is this file name right here. We need to type that baby in. Because we're in a virtualized environment, we can cheat. I'm going to highlight that in my document here. Make sure it's from the C to the end of bin, nothing more, nothing less. Right click, copy. Come over here, right click, paste. There is the name of my file. Otherwise, you could have typed that in manually. We hit enter. What do we want to call it when we copy it into Flash? Let's call it the same thing. We're accessing our FTP server. We copied that over, it went fairly quickly. And in step 2B, use the boot system command to configure the switch to load the new iOS on boot. It's a little bit different than what we did on the router, but it's almost identical. Well, it's the copy, or it's the boot, so it's boot, and then system, so actually boot space system, gotta spell system correctly. Then flash, here's where the little bit of difference is. On the router, we put a space and then the image name. What we do is we put a flash, then the colon, then that image name in there. Here's the image name again. I'm gonna highlight it, just the C all the way to the bin. No extra spaces. I'm gonna copy it. I'm gonna go ahead and paste it in here. Notice we are at flash, colon, and then our file name, there's no space in there. That sets it to boot from Flash with this file name. Reload S1. First thing we have to do is save our configuration. So do a copy, run, start. Oh, wrong mode, type of exit once. Now we can do our copy, run, start from global configuration mode. That's what we want to call it, startup-config. Yep, go ahead and hit enter. We are good to go. Now we can reload. So type in reload and hit enter. Are you sure? Yes, I am. Just go ahead and hit enter. It is loading. We can see here, this is the new image name right here. So we are loading from Flash. The new image name, we can tell that right away, but we'll give it a second. We'll check the show version when we get in there. Okay, it's booting up. 
This is a simulated environment, so it should go fairly quick. And we are in. And if we enter, type, get into privilege exec mode and do a show version. Show version. We have our information. Go all the way up to the top. Show version. Here is our image. Once again, this is our image that we were looking to load. The 1500-2 right here. 15 or 15.2. 15.0.2. So 150. 15.0-2 is our two in parentheses. That was our new version we are looking for. And we even got the SE4 at the end. So we have loaded the new version. And I'm going to minimize that. On to part two. Backup an iOS image to the TFTP server. On R1, display the contents of Flash and record the iOS image. So on R1, slide this up, make it a little bit bigger, right to left. And we need to do a directory here. Type in enable, get us into privilege exec mode, then type in DIR. This gives us our directory of Flash. Here is the image that we are, that we have, that we loaded in. Display the contents, record the iOS image. Now you could type this all in. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna highlight it from the beginning I to the ending dot bin. Right click, copy over here where it says type your answer. I'm not gonna type it. I'm gonna highlight it, right click and paste. There is my image name. That's what it's called. Use the copy command to back up the iOS image in Flash on R1 to the TFTP server. Note, the ISR 4000 image is considerably larger than the C19 image. It'll take longer to transmit. Okay. So we are going to upload it to the TFTP server. We're going to use that copy command. So it's copy. We are copying from Flash. And make sure you put your copy Flash colon. And then we're copying to the TFTP server. So TFTP colon. Going to go ahead and hit enter. First thing it's going to ask us is our source file name. That's the name on our device. Once again, I'm going to highlight it from the beginning I all the way to the ending dot bin. Right click, copy, come down here, right click, paste. There's our name in there. Hit enter. Then we put in the address of our host. Once again, that address is 192.168.2.254. It's going to ask you, what do you want to call it? Do you want to call it the name it is now? Yes, we are. All you have to do is hit enter. And it's going to start copying from R1 to the TFTP server. It is a little bit larger. Because when we did R2, when we loaded in the new image to R2, we only got like five or six lines of exclamation marks. Here we are getting a whole lot of them. And she's still going. And she's still even going after that. Ooh. And still going. It's a whole lot bigger. And still copying. And we're still going. And we are done. How do I know it worked okay or successfully? We have the okay message here. It tells us the amount of bytes we copied in a total of 18 seconds. Definitely seemed longer than that as I'm recording here. But it took 18 seconds to copy that over. The other one took four seconds. So we did our, we're done with step B here. 
Now we can go to step C, access the TFTP server and verify that the iOS image has been copied to the TFTP server. I'm gonna minimize R1, click on our TFTP server, and we are looking for the file that starts with ISR4300. Alphabetical order, ISR, there is no file in there. Here it says you may have to start and stop the TFTP service on the server so the file appears. There isn't a natural update, so what we have to do is we up here where it says service on, service off, we click off, it turned it off. Now we go ahead and turn it back on. Okay, that took a little bit longer to get it to show up. What I think worked was I turned it off. I clicked on a different tab over here. I think I clicked on DHCP version six. Then I clicked the fast forward button. I clicked that like a half a dozen times. I went back to the TFTP service. I clicked it back on. Now the image does show up. So we successfully uploaded it. Why did I have to do that? I guess it's just the product of the Packet Tracer simu simulation. That was Packet Tracer Lab 10.7.6. Use a TFTP server to upgrade a Cisco iOS image. It was my pleasure to provide you with this wonderful episode on configuration examples. If you like this episode and you got value out of it, please click that like button, give a five-star rating, leave a comment. This all helps me bring you more great content. Please take a minute to subscribe to my channel. All my socials and contact information are on my website, kevtechify.com. There you can find out how to get all these episodes in video and podcast form. Thank you so much for watching this episode of my series on practical configuration examples for the CCNA. I've created four wonderful playlists for you on the CCNA. These episodes, I go through all the concepts that Cisco calls out for the CCNA. Once again, I'm Kevin. This is Kev Techify. I'll see you next time for another great adventure.